In this clip, we're going to design a silicone rubber sleeve for the handle of an angle grinder. We'll get this particular contoured shape by combining a few different techniques. Sculpting with T-spline bodies, surface modeling using patches, and some manufacturing features from back in the model workspace. In the process, you'll see how we can utilize mirroring with patch bodies. Start by creating a new design and verify that the units are set to inches for this particular design. Create a new component and call it Sleeve. This is a best practice when modeling in Fusion 360. Always start by creating a component. We'll create the cylinder portion of the handle as a T-spline's body. Click on the Create Form command, which puts us in Sculpt mode. Then go to the Create menu and choose Cylinder. Click on the front work plane and drag the circle starting from the origin. Drag it out to some arbitrary dimension and click the mouse button. Now we can enter the diameter and the length in the cylinder window. For the diameter, enter 1.16 inches and negative 4 inches for the length. Click OK to finish the cylinder. Now we'll use the view cube to look at the cylinder from the right side and start to mold it to be a bit more like the shape that we want. Click the Edit Form icon and double click on one of the vertical edges to select the entire loop. Then use the center of the triad to expand or contract this loop a bit. And do the same for the next loop. Finally, click Finish Form to exit Sculpt Mode. When we look at the list of bodies in the browser, we can see that a patch body has been created. A patch body is different than the solid bodies that we're normally working with. It's essentially an infinitely thin surface that really couldn't exist in the real world. However, we can use these surfaces to create a solid body. The patch workspace is really useful for doing this kind of surface modeling. Switch to the patch workspace. Here, we'll add the grip pad to the top of this cylinder body. Before we get to modifying the form, let's just recognize that it's symmetrical. To maintain that symmetry, we can work on just one half of the body and mirror the remaining half once we've modified it. To do this, we'll first split the body in half using the split body command. Choose the body to split, followed by the splitting tool. In our case, this YZ work plane. Now we have two bodies. We'll hide one of them and begin to add that top grip pad feature to the remaining body. To start, let's view that body from the right side again. Then, create a sketch on the right work plane. Draw a spline that describes the contour of the feature that we want. Use the minimum number of points needed. Three should be fine. And stop the sketch. Now we can use the split body command again to cut the body along this new sketch curve. Choose the body to split, and choose the sketch curve as the splitting tool. Go back to the right view and choose the offset command from the create menu. We want to offset the patch body that we just created by 0.125 inches. Since that command created a new body, let's hide that original body that we created an offset from. Let's also scale the new body down a bit. Make it a bit smaller and click OK. Then go ahead and use the Move command to get it centered a bit. To do that, right-click on the body and choose the Move command. Now we need to create a surface that connects these two bodies. Create a sketch on the same right work plane that we've been using. And use the Spline command to draw a line between these two points. Depending on the shape that you want, you could instead use the Line tool or the Arc tool. I'll stop the sketch and choose the Sweep command from the Create menu. Choose Path and Guide Rail for the type. For Profile, we're actually going to click the spline that we just drew. Make sure Chain Selection is unchecked and choose this edge for the path and this other edge for the guide rail. Click OK, and we'll see that we've got a new body in the browser, and this finally looks like one half of our handle. Since we're happy with this half, it's about time that we mirror it. 
From the Create menu, choose Mirror. Make sure that the pattern type is set to Bodies, then draw a selection window around all of our bodies. For the Mirror Plane, again, choose that same right work plane. Then choose OK. What we've got now is a series of patch bodies that almost describe a solid body. All we need is to cap the ends, which we can do with the Patch command. Make sure Enable Chaining is deselected, and just click the edges that we want to close up on the end of the cylinder. I'll use the right mouse button and swipe up quickly to repeat the Patch command. Then do the same thing on the other side of the cylinder. The very last thing we need to do is sew all of these surface bodies together to create one solid body. To do that, we use the stitch command and just select all of the visible patch bodies. The green lines show where the stitching will happen. Click OK. And you can see that all of those separate patch bodies have been replaced with one solid body. To show that this solid body can be manipulated in the model workspace, let's add a couple of manufacturing features. First, we need the hole that goes through the center. From the Create menu, choose the Hole command. Select the end face and pick the origin point as the hole center. Enter a diameter of 1 inch and for extents, choose All. Then click OK to create the hole feature. And as a final detail, we'll add some fillets. Select the two edges on each end of the cylinder and enter a radius of 0.025. Click OK, and we're finished. You've seen through this example how mirroring can be part of a workflow for creating symmetrical parts. If you want to see this part in action, you can assemble it with the angle grinder handle I've provided in the exercise files.